Good morning. I'm Representative Tony McCombie from District 71. We are here to discuss the critical need for reforms at the Department of Children and Family Services. We all know DCFS is struggling, caseworkers are overburdened, and the outcomes for our children have too often been tragic. We all know the recent issues faced by DCFS, and I want to make sure that we do not forget the past. February 8, 2018, we mourned another horrible loss for DCFS and the state of Illinois when caseworker Pam Knight was brutally attacked and killed by the father of a two-year-old boy who she was advocating for in Chadwick, Illinois. DCFS caseworkers are the ones who are going into homes, putting their lives at risk in order to save children from dangerous situations, many times being obstructed by their parents and their guardians. After Pam's brutal beating in September 29th of 2017, Senator Brian Stewart and I drafted and introduced a bill to protect our state caseworkers. They need to know they are appreciated for the dangerous work they do and feel that we are doing everything that we can to support them. Without protections in place, how can we expect them to go into dangerous situations and protect our children to the best of their ability? While that bill stalled last year in what I view to be a misguided attempt to limit any enhancements on criminal penalties, this year I once again introduced a bill to protect our frontline workers and not let the tragedy that killed Pam Knight happen in vain. House Bill 1482 closes a loophole that adds protections for those that work for DCFS and the Department of Aging and let them know that we view their work as dangerous yet necessary as we are here to protect them. I am proud to report that we had 72 co-sponsors in the House and we passed that bill unanimous, unanimously with 112 votes. That being said, we have not been successful in the Senate. The bill has not even been assigned to a committee. Like I said before, we cannot expect caseworkers to be able to fully protect our state's vulnerable children and our aging population when their safety is being threatened every day and the General Assembly is not doing everything in their power to stand with them. Why is this basic common sense bill being blocked in the Senate? I've been trying to schedule a meeting with the leadership in the Senate, and I wrote a letter to Governor Pritzker imploring him to move this bill. He has stated that he is committed to help caseworkers. This should be the first step. We need to focus on the problems in Illinois and stop focusing on the politics. This bill, and unfortunately, this family that stands here with me today, is again being used as a political football. No one can say that we do not pass penalty enhancements as we have passed at least six this session alone. This bill does not solve all of DCFS's problems. We know there is more work to be done, but it is time that we stand with caseworkers like Pam Knight and tell them that they are appreciated and respected. We only have eight legislative days left, and I strongly encourage my colleagues and the other side of the aisle to push this legislation forward and to get it to the governor's desk. I am joined here today by Pam's husband, Don Knight, and their daughter, Jennifer, and Don would like to say a few words. Don? Thank you. Hello, my name is Don Knight. My wife of 32 years was Pamela Knight. She, uh, my wife lost her life last year. As part of her job, it was to perform welfare checks when she was assaulted. It was her duty to help protect a two-year-old child from in harm's way. Existing laws in Illinois protect most respond, responders. For example, if someone was to attack a firefighter or a police officer, they are then charged with a, a, or aggravated assault, and it's a felony. The crime of attacking a social worker ensues safety for children of Illinois should be the same. Send a message to children or child welfare workers 
Their lives matter, their safety matters. While I will never get my wife back, it has been my mission to improve DCFS's process and protect DCFS workers so this never happens again. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Tom Demmer, representative from Dixon. Uh, as Representative McCombie said, this bill was introduced last General Assembly and again this General Assembly. The bill had 72 bipartisan co-sponsors in the House. The bill is now being blocked in the Senate. An issue this important should not be used as a political or procedural block to stop a good bill from becoming law. I think it's very important that as we're continuing to look at all the problems that plague DCFS across the state, we recognize the integral role that caseworkers play in protecting the lives of children. If we implement reforms, it's likely that caseworkers are going to be sent into more homes where children could be in danger, more homes where parents could be abusive or violent. We must have protections for DCFS workers in the future that Pam Knight did not have. We stand strongly with the Knight family, with Don and with Jennifer. We stand with bipartisan colleagues in the House. We stand with 72 people who put their names on a bill because they believed it was the right thing to do. The Senate must take up this bill. The Senate must vote on this bill. The governor must sign this bill. And we must do everything we can to make sure that when we as a state ask caseworkers to protect our most vulnerable, that we also have their back. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? One criticism that you always hear about, you know, law enforcement in general and trying to do penalty enhancements or anything like that, uh, it seems to be kind of the same thing with you know, firearms. You can't wait for police to show up to the crime, right? That's why people make firearms to protect themselves. What does this do to actually protect somebody who's going into a harmful situation like this? Like, should they should they have some kind of law enforcement detail go with them and? Is that the real way to actually protect them, or is this just something on the back end after something tragic happens, then, you know, go after somebody as like a, um, a message to send to others to not do this? Well, that was a, that was a lot. Uh, so first off, um, I think we're all in agreement that enhancing penalties does not necessarily deter crimes, and I think that's the big message that has been the thought process. But you can't have that message for one bill and then pass it for somebody else and then pick and choose who gets it. And if this is that's what it's about, give it to a Democrat and let them pass it. We don't care. Senator, Senator Ant, or Stewart is more than willing to give it to a Democrat. This is not about us, and, and we're tired of that piece of it. Just pass the bill. This is, this is for a better process, and this is what is fair. It really is a closure of a loophole. It, this was a reactive situation. It was never known until this unfortunately happened that this was even in the law. Um, it... it, it Peace officers, community policing, firemen, private security officers, correction officers, DH DHS employees are all the same. So it's just as really unfortunately an oversight. It's unfortunate um, that that Pam passed away, but can you imagine if, if this person would have only been treated really like he just beat somebody up? I mean, this was a horrendous situation. Um, the processes of DCFS are being, all four caucuses are looking at that right now. Is it best for law enforcement to always go into these situations? You know, they're looking at all of that right now, and I hope that, that we come up with a better process through DCFS um, overall. Until we get to that. This Until we get to that. You know, um, this situation, from, from our understanding, you know, we, this, he was not supposed to be there. Um, and so we don't know, you know, what was the best way, and, and we can't answer that right now. And it's under, you know, it's in the courts, and, you know, we certainly don't want to jeopardize it saying anything right now on that. Pam, Thank you. How do you explain to the 17,000 children in care right now that if they act out because of trauma, because they've been abused their entire lives, and they're dealing with a system that has failed them, they act out because of trauma, they could now be facing felony charges. Thank you for bringing up that question because that this bill does not, that is not the case absolutely at all. That question has, has been brought up for foster children that are 18 to 21 years old. This is not that case at all. This is actually knowingly causing harm. This is not for the case of a child who, who strikes out or kicks. That is not 
That is not how the statute reads. That's not how the bill reads. It is not that case at all. This is for the case where the gentleman, or not the gentleman, this animal pulls a woman out of her car and knowingly beats the crap out of her and kills her. That's what this, this is what this bill's about. Well, the, the, the debate is bringing forth for those that are the opponents on that is that there are still ch foster children in the system from 18 to 21, and the, the social workers are against that. Um, there's 100 social workers licensed in the state of Illinois, and we've talked to several of them personally, and I'm going to guess that they're probably not personally against that. Somehow the, the, the folks lobbying for that have a different story. Um, if, if verbiage needed to be put in there that we are going to exclude uh, those, th you know, that hasn't even been brought forth that that would be the case. But if a child between the age of 18 and 21, a child between the age of 18 and 21 accidentally kicked a social worker, this is knowingly, knowingly caused bodily harm, severe bodily harm. That is in the statute. That's not an accidental kick or an accidental strike. Um, and that's also up to the courts. I mean, I think, some, I think a judge is going to know the difference of an accidental kick or, a, or an accidental strike compared to a knowingly bashing her head in. I've seen other bills where there's more than enough bipartisan support to even you know, pass uh, the veto override that gets stolen the committee, uh, even though it's got you know, 75 co-sponsors in the House, for instance. Um, what's behind that? I mean, if, if there's that much support for something, why does it get stalled? I haven't. I haven't heard from leadership on the other side. We've been trying to, to get in touch with leadership on the other side, and I have not heard from them. Um, this is Illinois, and unfortunately, uh, politics plays a, a big part of everything here. And unfortunately, if we would concentrate on policy here, uh, things would be a lot better. Um, but, you know, we create all of this drama and don't concentrate on the policy because guess what? If we solve the problems in Illinois, a lot of politicians would be out of work. For this bill, was there ever talk of um, considering maybe also talking about adding additional staff and uh, more training and like physical um, and mental services for these uh, caseworkers and frontline staff? Now for this bill, this was just a particular. This was just a cleanup bill, just closing the loophole on this bill. Now I do believe that the working groups with the four caucuses are going to be looking at at those pieces. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks Thank for you.